So, <clears throat> to quickly recap, we've made a brush preset. We've saved that preset to your computer so you can take it home. I've showed you how to load it back in. And now what we're going to do is use that to like create our face disintegration. So just to recap, if you haven't done already, new document, call it face, delete your last name. We use a web preset. 1024 by 768. We want to place the photo that you just took. And now once we've got that photo in there, we want to duplicate that layer. So the way to do that is you can right click and go duplicate layer. Or a quick shortcut is Control J. Once you have that layer selected, Control J is a duplicate layer. And then we'll rename that first layer as Backup. It's always a good idea to keep a backup of the image on the bottom layer hidden. In case something goes wrong, you can quickly go back and grab that image. And in this layer, we'll go foreground. Now first thing we want to do is hide that backup layer. We want to delete the background. So we can do that in multiple ways, but the quickest way I think to do it, if we don't have too many shadows in the image, is just to use the quick select tool. And with this quick select tool here, oh sorry, magic wand tool we'll use, not the quick selection tool, we can play around with tolerance. So if you have like a higher color difference between pixels, you want to use a higher tolerance. But if you've got a low difference, you want to use a lower tolerance. So because our background is mostly grey, we might try using a lower to tolerance to begin with. And you can see here, <coughs> it was too low because we haven't picked up all the grey. So we'll just increase that. Control D to deselect your selection and try again. It's better but not good, so we'll go up to 25. This is much better. So now that we've got that selected, we'll just hold down Shift and we'll add more to that selection. So remember, the two buttons to add or subtract are Shift and Alt. And you can see that the magic wand icon changes from a plus to a minus. So if we're plusing or adding data, this should be Shift. And say if you wanted to subtract data, like here in the hair, it's Alt. But don't worry too much because we use the Refine Brush tool. So once we've done that, we'll add a mask. And remember, whatever's automatically selected gets hidden. So to reverse that, we'll just go Control-I. Once you have the mask selected, hitting Control-I inverts that selection. <coughs> Am I going too fast? Yes. Yeah. Yep, okay. So to recap, we want to select the background using the Magic Wand tool using a tolerance that allows you to select the background but not the foreground. And once you have that selected, we want to then add a mask. So I've taught you how to do masks in the last class. You just want to add a layer mask. <coughs> but then remembering the layer mask automatically hides whatever you had selected. We just invert that mask by hitting Control-I. With the mask and the background? Sorry? With the mask on the background layer? Uh, the mask goes on the foreground layer. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you're going 
Mm-hmm. You must add the slayer behind it. Yeah. And now see how it's hidden the selection? If we just hit Control I. Uh, Control I. Yep. And then it inverts. Okay, so for those of you that have brought images from home, I should probably show you first that you want to make adjustments. So if your lighting is not good or you have too much contrast or something like that, it's best to adjust this first before you start manipulating the image. So you can do that by going up to image, adjustments, and then it's really whatever's wrong with your image. If you have something wrong with the brightness or contrast, you can change it here. If there's something wrong with the tone or color, you can change it here. <coughs> so this image is good, but if your image from home is you know, too dark or something like this, please adjust it first because it's too complicated to do it later because you'll have multiple layers. All right, so the next step we're gonna do is refine the edge. So everyone knows how to refine mask. Right click your mask, refine mask, and using the paintbrush tool, we want to make sure that those edges pick up all the hairs and stuff. 
And remember, you want to paint on the, uh, the edge of the data. So if you want your hair to show up, we are painting on the side that's got the hair on there, but the majority of that paintbrush should be off of the head, like this. If I was to do it the other way, it would try to do the reversal and remove data. Uh, so if you're clicking Refine Edge, it's normally to do with a selection, but if you're going Refine Mask, right click Refine Mask, it's refining your mask. I don't have Refine Mask, I just have... I just... So if we right click this... Okay, we will just change this to this, okay? I'm not sure, maybe your computer is uh, not set up the same, but it, this will do the same. As long as it is set to lay a mask, it's okay. But I think that I don't understand this, this too. I don't understand. Ah, okay. So there's lots of different things you can do. Maybe if you have like an object you want to make like with a more soft edge, <coughs> you can do something like this. Ah, yeah. oh, no, no, no. Sorry. We must. Uh, you have something selected. Yeah. Control D is to deselect. Yeah. Okay. And now it is for fun. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. And sometimes it's easier to use black and white, so you can see the edge really well. But see here, your hair is not really well done. So to fix this, we can come up here, and you can do many things. You can feather the edge so it's blended. But what we'll use is this edge detection. So we turn Smart Radius on, and we just brush on the outside of that <coughs> edge. And you can see here, it's gone and determined your hair is a different color. So it picked up all those hair particles. But the important thing is, not to go inside the face. So we're just going on the very edge and that tells the computer which data we're actually looking for. For instance, see how I'm drawing on this side? It's because I want to add data because I'm looking for this hair. But if I'm trying to subtract, I go on the other side. <coughs> See that? Mm -hmm. So remember, if we're trying to add those hairs that are missing, we're just going on the outside of the edge and the computer picks up what's the difference. Mm -hmm. You can see all those hairs now picked up. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, can I just go back to the computer? Yeah. 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 yeah, you need to be just closer. <coughs> Last time I did like this, and then I was also going to this, but then I now it's a little too much inside. I think uh, there might be too much of a <coughs> similarity of color between your hair and the background. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> there's not much to do. <laughs> so we can try to put this decontaminate colors. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, it's quite difficult. If, it, if it's not correct, you can do this and then come back with the paintbrush tool uh -huh. and just manually uh, <coughs> fix up. <coughs> Anyone else having trouble? No? Yeah. Okay, so this is where we show you how to do the refine edge. So see here, your hair is not correctly uh, subtracted. So we want to use smart radius. And you can actually, you want to see maybe the opposite to everyone else because you have um, too much data. <coughs> see how it's speaking with your hair? Uh, in some instances, like here, you want to do the opposite, so you want to go on the inside edge because you're subtracting. But actually, I think you're still like, uh, needing to do some further, further uh, sub subtractions here because. This is still too messy. And you can change your tolerance here. Maybe I'm going to go. You can try to pick up all these. Is it okay to use the quick selection? You can use quick selection here and try to remove more data. And then we can bring back your hair. That 
rather than having the star here. So if you were to do it with a, like this. Yeah. How can I, um, put here? So, the, uh, but if you, depending on the side your paintbrush goes on, so if you're painting over the data that you want to remove, you need to have uh, the small edge of your brush still touching the data you want to see. So the only way it works is with the difference in colour. So if, if that paintbrush is determining one side of your paintbrush to be a different colour to the other, it's going to remove the data that's a different colour. So you need to show that the minority of the edge of that is quite obvious when you're painting it. Does that make sense? I don't know. Like, it's not going to work for every single hair, but only where there's like a higher difference in colour. I would use yeah. no, I would use a small paintbrush so you can reduce the range of it. And go mm -hmm. hold that hold. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So Is everyone ready to move on? Yep. So first thing we want to do is create a new layer, but we don't want to use a mask this time. So what we're going to do is go edit. Oh, sorry. Firstly, sorry. Select all, control A. Edit. And then we're going to copy merge. And what this means is we're literally copying everything that's on the screen at that time and we're merging it into one layer. So copy merge and then edit and we'll just go paste. And then we can position it. Or if you want, you go control shift V and it pastes it exactly in place. So you can see here in your layers, you've got one layer with your foreground um, and it's got the, the mask and then we've got another layer which we'll call effect. So rename that layer effect. And that layer is literally just that data. There's no mask attached. So we want to select all, control A, 
Then we get better. Copy that. And then control shift V is the best thing to do. So guys, make sure you've got control A or select all before you try to copy merged. Alrighty, so now that we've got that layer on top and there's no mask attached, we're going to go up to filter and liquefy. And now what we're going to do now is you need to envision where you want your disintegrated face to flow or fly to and what part of your face you want to fly, if that makes sense. So liquify allows you to literally warp the photo as if it was liquid. So here we can adjust the brush size. But apart from that, the other settings are fine. Yep. So once you've got that first layer selected, the one that hasn't got a mask attached, we want to go to filter and liquefy. And then keeping in mind what you actually want to happen with your photo in the end, you're going to adjust it now. So I might want some particles floating out to the right hand side here, so I'm just going to literally drag his face out to the right. But you need to be careful that you don't interrupt the features of the face. So if you're imagining someone's face disintegrating, you're not going to see the colour of the eyeball disintegrate, for example. You'll see mainly the skin and hair. So try not to warp the eyes and the mouth, because these realistically don't warp. Or, I mean, they don't disintegrate. Or if you have some sort of artistic vision in hand, you can do that if you think it's going to work. So, for instance, I think mostly it's going to be face and hair, and it's all going to warp out to this side. Yeah, you need to re reduce the brush size. If it's too big of a brush, you can't warp that same area. And you, to do that, it's on the side here, brush size. Mine is like uh, 190, but this is too big. I think 100 is a good size. And don't be worried if you think you've warped it too much because you're not actually going to be able to see this. <laughs> We're literally just moving the colour of the face to the side so we can pick those colours up later. If you feel like you don't know what you want to do yet, just drag it all the way to the edge of the page and that way it leaves you with a lot of data later to come back and decide where you want to actually um, disintegrate. So that's what I'll just do now. Mm -hmm. uh, must have control A, selecting all first. If you just went control V, it's going to paste it to the centre of your page, but control shift V places it in place. Pastes in place. Okay, so once you're happy with your liquify, hit OK. Like so. So we should have three layers now. You've got an effects layer that we've just liquefied. You've got your foreground layer, which is your, uh, your face that's been masked. And you've got a backup layer, which is just our image untouched. So now what we want to do is we want to create a mask on that effects layer. Like this. We want to invert that mask, so black is the primary <laughs> colour. So control I to invert that mask. 
Control I. And now remembering that we just made a brush, we want to find that brush. So go to your paint tool, brush tool, and find the brush that you've, you've just made. So for instance, I made a butterfly. Now don't start painting yet because I'm going to show you how to change your brush presets, or oh, brush textures and patterns. Is anyone having trouble? Yep. The best thing to do is to reduce 
as we are here. But the last of the river is good, you want to make it more as we are here. Here we're going to hand the side. And here you can set the anchor, so if you want to anchor to get the bottom, <coughs> the bottom part, yeah. And then you can increase the size here. So it says your current width is 36. You can go up to a 50 if you want. <laughs> So first thing I want you guys to do is open up, on the right hand side here you'll see a brush panel. If you can't see that, just go windows and brush. So this is really where all the magic happens. This is where you can turn a static brush into something a lot more powerful. First thing I'm going to show you here is the spacing. So if you're up here and brush tip shape, the first panel you'll have these options available. We've selected our custom brush tip we've just made. We've adjusted the size, it doesn't really matter because we can do that later. Here we can adjust the spacing and this is where we're, we're changing it from going to a constant brush stroke to a stamp. So you can see there straight away I've gone and I've now got butterflies. So if I was to like hold that down, I'm going to have a trail of butterflies. If I was doing that in a new layer. Like this. So it's a really powerful tool. And you've probably wondered why Photoshop always has these weird paintbrush tools like the leaves, etc., that always just ended up like this. It's because once you space them, they're actually quite handy, especially when you're doing like Photoshop renders. So spacing is really important, but that's only just the beginning. So now if we go down to shape dynamic, the next one down. Here we can create a jitter. So a jitter sort of means you're taking something that's gone static and making it more dynamic. Wherever that be, it jitters along the X or Y axis, so your paintbrush is constantly moving, or its jitter is like the size, so you have like one big, small. It's really cool. So we'll start with size jitter. So here I'm just dragging this up, and you can see down here in the preview, now I've got multiple size butterflies. So if I was to paint that, you can see that they come out in different sizes. You can also set the minimum diameter, so if you're drawing something that's really big and you don't want a, a, a tiny little butterfly, you can set the minimum diameter so that it's mostly big. Like this. But I like it small. Next thing is angle jitter. So if you imagine this paintbrush, it's always painting facing up. We can change that by creating an angle jitter, which means each little brush stamp is going to be rotated <coughs> randomly. So angle jitter. Just remember if you're doing something like birds or butterflies, rarely does a bird fly upside down. So if you're creating a, an angle jitter for something like a butterfly or a bird, remember that it's going to be somewhat facing upwards because it always flies upwards. But if it's something like a, something else, you can create an angle jitter really dramatic. So you literally have them doing 360. But for me, I'll just go subtle so they're just facing different ways. Roundness jitter is a different thing here. It's not so important because what you're doing is literally just um, skewing them. I, I think this is uh, less important for what we're doing today. And down here, you can do stuff like flip X axes, flip Y axes, and, and brush protection. Not so important because you're jittering it anyway. Smaller ones here is with the size jitter. Can you see these? Oh, yeah. yeah. So size jitter means that you're making the size random. Yeah. Angle jitter is like the, the rotation random. And roundness is like the skew. So once we've looked at those, we'll go down to scattering, which is the next preset. And now this is sort of saying X and Y jitter. So we've looked at size 
we've looked at angle and we've looked at roundness. Now we'll go scattering, which is really the randomness of its X and Y placement. So you can see already, like, it's, it's quite dramatic to change. You have here, like, a really uniform path. If I was to paint that, you've got, like, a trail of butterflies. But if I wanted to add some randomness to its X and Y placement, scattering is the thing to do. So you can see here, now it's, it's randomly placing butterflies. So first thing we can do is adjust how much scatter they have. So whether they're in a straight uniform line or just a little bit, a little bit random from a line or really dramatic. You can adjust both axes or one axis. One axis just means you're adjusting um, its Y placement. Next is the count. So if you're going to make more and more butterflies, or less, or more and more whatever you're painting. And the count jitter also in, it means how randomly each one of these stamps is jittered in terms of how many. And you're probably thinking, what's the use of, of painting so many butterflies when they're all the same color? It just merges like this. But we can also <laughs> adjust the color. So don't worry about texture too much because we're not going to import any texture maps or anything. Dual brush is good if you wanted to do a second um, brush at the same time. So maybe you were doing butterflies and then also you were doing birds. So you could add a bird brush at the same time and do a dual brush. But what we're going to look at now is colour dynamics. So here we can create a jitter for colour. So here we've got hue jitter. Everyone knows what hue is. It's like its difference between base colour. Saturation is how heavy the colour is. Brightness and purity. So if we were using a colour like green for my butterflies, oops. You'll see here that they're coming out all different colours because I have a colour jitter and a hue jitter. Like you can make the colour difference a lot more dramatic. You can make saturation a lot less. Uh, it's locked. You can just unlock it here. See the icon? Just unclick it. these options won't be available to you. Alrighty, so now that we've got butterflies of lots of different colours, you'll see that if you overlap them, there's not a big difference because they're all defined differently in colour. So, now we're going to show you how to do the disintegration. So, I'll just delete my example. And what we're really going to do here is paint on the layer mask. So remembering that on the layer mask we only use black and white. Although I showed you how to do the colour dynamics, we're going to turn that off. And we're only going to use black and white. So if we go to your layer mask and we make sure we're selecting white as our colour, you've got to think about what's going to happen. So the way I envision this is I'm going to start off with lots of little butterflies next to his head and they're going to be flying out of his head with bigger butterflies at the end. So I've already set my scatter, I've set my shape dynamics. Maybe I'm happy with these, maybe my scatter is too much. I'm going to turn the count down so there's less butterflies. And now I'm going to right click and adjust my size. And then I'm just going to paint them on. Like so. 
Maybe I think there's too many butterflies there, so I'm going to come back and turn my count down again. So there's even fewer, and my scatter I think is too much. Or maybe my spacing is too much, so I can come back and adjust those settings. And then I come back and I paint them. Mm -hmm. So again, I was explaining that I was going to start off with small butterflies and then work up bigger. So I've painted little butterflies on already, maybe I think even smaller ones across his face. And now I'm going to move up. So I'm going to get bigger, maybe even bigger. And bigger. And if you've um, realised that you haven't painted enough of your, um, your, your liquify layer, like I can see here, there's only a half a butterfly shown, which means I've gone over that layer edge already. It's okay, we can come back and adjust that. So if you select your liquify layer again, the effects layer that we've made before, we can go up to filter and just repeat that step. Filter, liquify. And so I'll drag this down. And now you can see those butterflies show up. If you find that using this tool is too much and the scatter is too, um, too, I don't know, too interfering, like I've got too many butterflies overlapping here, it doesn't make sense, you can come back and change those presets and essentially turn them way down or turn them off. Maybe the only thing you want is spacing and then maybe angle jitter. And then you can paint individually. And if you've gotten to a stage where you think maybe um, it doesn't look good, you can always just go back, or if you want, you can go back to your mask and paint on with black, remembering that black subtracts. So here I think I've gone too many. I'm just going to go back with black and then remove some of these butterflies that I think are too much. So who's following along so far? And then here in 
brushing yeah. shapes. Uh, yeah. Here we will increase the spacing. So the, <coughs> the fervor up. Uh -huh. Like this. <coughs> Can I see your brush? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, guys, if your brush is not coming out like really solid, it's probably because the, the brush tip that you've made may not be fully solid and uh, um, black. So if you use the color other than black to make your, your image, maybe this is the reason. But I'm not sure if that's the reason. Can I see if you turn on... Just, if you hold down shift, you can this off of shift. Yeah. So you can see. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So guys, maybe someone's come and uh, used your computer before you. Before you do this, make sure your opacity and flow up the very top here are set to 100. I think everyone knows what opacity or opacity means. It means like how see-through or how much uh, fill your image is given. Flow, if you think about a paintbrush, is how quickly the ink flows off the paintbrush. So for you guys, you want it to be 100% so you have a really solid flow of paint. If you've got less, it's going to come up faint. Okay? Um, and you can really do anything with this. I've just showed you one way, but maybe I'll just delete this and show you another way. Actually, before I go on, you can also do the inverse. So we've just painted on our effects layer. You can also subtract from our foreground layer. So if you wanted to make your face crumble, we can just come in here and paint with black across your, across your face. It doesn't work so much with butterflies, but maybe I'll do something different. There's lots of different brush presets. Here's one I made last night. I can come in and start deleting his face like this. So it looks like his face is literally turning into, into butterflies. I'll show you. So what we've done first is paint on with black, uh, with white, the butterflies, and we paint on the effects layer mask. But now what we want to do is subtract from the foreground mask, remembering that the effects layer is the liquify mask, and the foreground mask is your face. So now we go down to the foreground mask, and what we're going to do is painting with black. Remember, black is to delete. You can use a different brush preset if you want. <coughs> or you can make another one. Maybe you want to make a brush preset that looks like a crack. Uh, I made one that looks like little triangles. And then I might just quickly add some spacing. Actually, angle jitter, size jitter. And then you can just come and paint on his face. So it looks like his face is literally disintegrating. And maybe you've realized that the, the liquify layer that you've made is not so nice. So if I look at mine, I, I can see these butterflies here and here. They show too much of this, this liquify effect. So what I'll do is I'll come back to my liquify effects layer. Instead of selecting the mask, I'll select the layer. And then I'll go filter and liquify, and I can adjust that liquify. So for instance, I want more of that skin color to come through. So I'm just going to push that skin all the way to the edge and get rid of that hair. And that's going to make me have nicer butterflies. Okay? Like that. Mm -hmm. um, so what 
Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it. Um, you can do lots of different things. So maybe I don't like to do the butterflies. I can easily go back. Actually, I might just go back. Mm. Not like that. And say, for instance, I wanted to delete half of this face. So I can come along with the, the brush tool and literally like delete half this guy's face. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then coming back to my effects layer that I've made. I can then paint on his face again using a different brush tool. So for maybe this instance, I will use a square. Uh, I think you're early as well, so don't, don't stress. And then I will come up and I will make spacing, shape dynamics. And scattering. Like this. and using the right color. So you can do lots of different things and like really your creativity is limitless. Like I've shown you like maybe one way to do this but you can go home and think of like a million ways. Uh, it's, it's really great that you can make any sort of brush tip as well. So I really like to use like something square and architectural because like we're studying mostly architecture here. Uh, but it's really up to you.
Uh, and one last thing I will show you. So we've made this image and it looks great, but one way to make it look even better is to add an extra background layer. So we'll go new layer and we'll push this to the bottom. We'll call this background. <coughs> and now I always like to use a gradient. So if you go and add a gradient here, I like radial gradients and I really like black and white. So it's up to you, you can do whatever background you like, but I think black and white is a really subtle way to make a nice background. So the way the gradient works is you choose a center point and then you draw it out. Like this. Maybe this is not enough. You can do even more. And you can always invert. So the reverse up the top here. And then once you have this background, you can adjust its opacity and fill. So I think just like a, a really nice subtle layer like this is really great. And remember, we always need to crop the image as well. So using the marquee rectangle tool, we'll just select our image and then edit, oh sorry, image crop like this. Um, which layer do we have to crop? Uh, the, you just crop the entire thing because we're not cropping a layer, we're cropping the entire image. So you select, like I'll show you, see how I had done the bottom here? There's like missing, missing data. Yeah. I could either just select all my layers like this okay. and drag down. It's one way to do it. Or I just use the rectangle marquee tool here, and then I select uh, everything <laughs> that I want to keep, and go image, crop, like this. Um, one last thing I will tell you is, yeah, we can add some, some effects on top because we've got five minutes left. So now that you've done your image and you think it looks nice, but the colors don't look very artistic, okay? There's ways we can make Photoshop bring out these colors more. So if you go to the top of your layer stack, what we want to do here is hit the adjustment layer and what we want is gradient map. Okay, everyone can see the gradient map. What is the first layer? Uh, the first layer, just go all the way to the top. It's new? Uh, yeah, you don't need this, so this is just my, my rubbish. Okay. So you just want to go to the top of your layers and then add a gradient map, which is in the effects uh, adjustments layers. Here? And now you see that you have uh, properties on the right hand side. We want to open this up. And now the one that I'm going to show you here is this one. So gradient map. Yeah. And then, okay, so here you don't have the dialog box, so we just want to make sure, ah, it's over here. So if you click this, we want to change it to the one that's purple and orange. And now the reason I bring the purple and orange is because it's one of my favorites, but it allows the shadows to be made really blue and the highlights really orange. So if you hit OK, You'll see it's like this. And then remember, we wanted to change the overlay style. So if we go up to here, the overlays, we can change this to, say, a uh, soft light. And it changes the way all the colors look. And now, if you don't like this and you want it to be something more depressing, you can change the gradient map. So clicking on the gradient map, and we can change it to something more... Uh, not this one. We want something with blues, like blue hues that make it sad. You can even make your, your own if you like. So we had this, but now we want to change it. We can put this as blue. I know? So here we will change this 
I'm sorry, I will just reset this. I'm not sure. Maybe this is the person before you. We want this one here. This is my favorite. Okay. I think it uh, brings out really nice shadows and really nice highlights. And so once we have this selected, we want to change it to something like soft light. Okay. And see the colors now are much richer. Your highlights are orange and your, your shadows are a bluey yeah. purple. And we don't have to put another layer in the really bad background to do that. Uh, so it, for Photoshop, it shows up this is transparent. But if you were to export this to image, it would be yeah, different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, could you go to print preview, maybe? Yeah. Uh, I'm not even sure if you can do print preview, but yeah, when you save it, it will be very different. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. I think you understand. Okay, guys, that's that's it. So, thanks for today. And we have to put a gradient on it. Yeah, so I think gradients bring out the colors. You should play around with the gradients. My favorite is the purple and cyan. I think it's the best for bringing out the richness of color. But you can play around. I mean, this is looking nice as well, and we've used blue and orange. So play around with the gradients. But I think it's important for you to understand that you can add these adjustment layers on top of your stack. And actually, the important thing is this time we're not clipping it. So remember, last time when we added adjustment layers, we clipped it, this button here. Don't clip it. We want this to affect all of our layers. But uh, if you look at any advertising posters and stuff like that, they always do color adjustments. And this is what we're sort of doing with the color adjustments. So you can always see that something on a poster looks a little bit unrealistic. It's because it is. It's got color adjustments done to it to make it look more artistic or more professional. So play around with it. Some of them look good, some don't. Yeah? Uh -huh. So first we want to go to the top. Yeah, this one. And this here. Ready? And now that we have this here, we want to change it. Okay, just reset this. But uh, now what we want to do is change the color style to something like soft light. And this could also mean for the background with the gradient. Here we can go with the gradient. We like gradients, like gradient, this one here, so it comes out in the middle. And we go black and white. So I think here we want reverse, actually, we want white in the middle. Like this. And then we can bring this down. I think the problem here is it's still your hair. So if it's too dark, you should probably adjust it a little bit better. I go deeper and push more of your skin out because the skin is more identifiable as a face. Anyone else, Eva? I just want to know if I need to like add something else or do you want also the face to be more on the skin? No, it's, it's completely up to you. Like, I just need to see. Okay, so everyone, I think this is pretty much the end. But what I need to see from you for your homework, so to upload it to the Facebook by next week, is you need to show me that you've mastered the brush tip presets. So you need to make your own brush tip. You need to show me that you know how to do the scatter, the, uh, the jitter on the brush uh, controls. So I need to see that you know how to do the manipulations for the brush. And then I need to show that you've actually done the, the task. So you don't need to do this half, half face. You don't need to do the blowout. You just need to do one of them, okay? Or, or something different. It's completely up to your creativity. I just need to see that you've mastered the tools in the class, okay? But, um, in, in relation to the last project, don't go overboard as well. Subtleness is really nice. So if you go too much, sometimes it takes away from the image. Try to keep it a little bit subtle. 